This week on Barbell Struck, we interview Greg and Amy Everett about. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> oh, you did You shut up. Or you, you didn't have to what say. happened? Barbells and titties. Okay. And my fear of diarrhea. We did talk about that. <laughs> right? I'm quite diarrhea. Do you want to say I think we just keep it just the way it is. Tricked you. Oh, camera batteries. Camera batteries are dead. We're gonna have to recharge them real quick. <laughs> real quick. <laughs> Welcome to Barbell Shrugged. I'm Mike Bletzer here with Doug Larson and Chris Moore hanging out in Hi Sunnyvale, California with Amy Everett. If, uh, if you're not familiar <laughs> with what she does, she's a weightlifting coach and athlete at Catalyst Athletics. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you give us a, oh, wait, before we get into Amy's <laughs> biography. You almost skipped hold it. Hold that thought, Amy. Hold that thought. Uh, make sure to go to barbellstrug.com, sign up for the newsletter. Doing cool stuff all the time. We're not going to talk about it here, but we'll email you. <laughs> so sign up for that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so what? what? <laughs> so Amy, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? How did you get into weightlifting? And uh, what brought you to this point in your life right now, standing here with us? With right us. now, here today? That's right. Well, when I was a young, I'm like almost 100 in weightlifting years, so a really long time ago, I uh, was playing volleyball, and my, vo my then club volleyball coach sent me to this guy, you may know him, his name's Mike Bergner. Oh, Do you yeah. know who he is? Yeah, he's so famous. Knows Michael. I know. He's like Jay-Z famous now. Like really famous. But so he... The cowboy hat he's up there. I know. He... Um, so I met him when I was just a girl, 19, a long time ago, and I... You know, weightlifting wasn't how it is today with like all these coaches and you know the popularity of it that CrossFit has brought and stuff and so he just looked at me and said hey see that what that guy's doing right there that's you what I want you to cool? do that's what you have to do that that's how I learned and I like I never in my entire life lifted a weight I played three varsity sports in high school all four years but we didn't never went to a weight room and so I was like wow this is kind of cool so I turned down volleyball and I started weightlifting. Turned down. Dude, so well, you weren't you weren't built for volleyball anyway. Well, I have a really good vertical jump, so it, it's like a wow! To, look at this short little girl. And then whoosh! Out of nowhere, here I go jumping you in. Had, bam! Had Wait, you, have, you have a good vertical jump now, or you did then too? Well, I did then, but Is that I from I, weightlifting. No, I I've always had hops. Oh, word. <laughs> yeah. And it actually funny about that is I just was at my cousin's house last weekend and she had a picture from her wedding when I was only, I think, 17. And I was catching the bouquet and my feet were like at everybody's waist. And I was catching the bouquet like far above everybody. My elbows the were like in their didn't face. Stand a chance. Yeah, I have it on my phone. I, I sent it. I, I sent it to Greg. I was like, look. Um, so that's how I was able to play volleyball because I am we, short. We didn't even mention Greg yet. We'll uh, Greg, come on. Oh, yeah. Greg's we'll be, my husband. You know, we'll Mr. Be podcasting with Anaya him later. Yeah, we, we came. <laughs> oh, I see what you did. <laughs> right. So did you turn, so on this level, was this turning down a chance to play? Yeah, I was going to play volleyball for college. Wow. And um, I decided, you know, I don't really want to go to college. Did so. you say, you know what, you know, like, you know, maybe like, you know, fuck this, you know? I was like, <laughs> fuck this shit. <laughs> yes. I'm going to stay here with Coach Bergner and I'm going to do this barbell shit. And so I did. And I think like two months later, I qualified for junior nationals. Found your fucking passion, didn't you? I did. And then, um, he, and then that's it. That's what I did. I lifted for a long time. How, your heart. how old are you now? I mean, am I allowed to ask that? I just celebrated the sixth reunion of my 30th birthday. It sounds like a lot of math. I'm thinking, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, nice. Um, <laughs> uh. So I lifted and then I took a break. I took five years off. I got knocked up. I went to college and got a couple master's degrees and... Oh, snap. Yeah, and then I um, started lifting again. And I came back much wiser and stronger and more mature. And What are the degrees in? 
uh, human behavior psychology. Oh shit, we're dealing with one of you types now. Yeah, I, you know it. That explains I'm a crazy a lot. person. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you follow her on Twitter, it now oh, like all just makes now. sense. You know, <laughs> does it make sense now? Yeah, yeah. That's why my Twitter handle is called Amy's Two Cents with a number two. A I M E E number two cents. I have something to say about everything. I'm going to look you up right now. I'm going to follow you. Ah, And I want to yes. see what your two cents are. I'm like 990,000 people away from a million followers. I'm super That's close. Shit, no, Doing good. Doing good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did I just leave you speechless? <laughs> that that happens so, so few times. Not very often. No. Wait, so how'd, how'd you meet Greg? Um, Coach Bergner. I I had actually met him met him like two or three times before I actually realized I was meeting him. I kind of s- sail through life not paying a whole lot of attention to people. Like I'm always <laughs> the one that's like, "Hi, nice to meet you," as they're saying, "Nice to see you again." I'm like fuck, <laughs> I just blew it. I studied how to do this better in psychology. <laughs> yeah, I'm really so, bad. So y'all at that. had met several times, and then uh, yes, I did. So he had met you several times, but. Eventually, right. you met him. Eventually, well, uh, he had started emailing me to help me. At that time, I was trying to be like little weightlifter, and Coach Bergner says you have to email Greg Everett, and you know he and he'll help you with your diet and stuff. And and so he started emailing me. I'm like, who is this Greg Everett guy? And Who's then, this jerk? Yeah, and then uh, I had to, and then then he, I found out that I had met him a couple times, so I had to Google him and try to find his picture to, to see like who he was. And you Sorry. said, oh, he's handsome. He'd been coaching for a while. No. Uh, oh, At the met. time, oh. he lived in Chico and I lived in Southern California and he f- just fell madly in love with me over the internet and then He's in his office going, okay, that's he, not that he, moved down. <laughs> <laughs> he moved down to Bonzel to where Coach Bergner is and um, he's, he came down there to learn from him but also to be with me course Mm -hmm. and probably the main reason (laughs) that was like eight years ago and then you know at the time I was still finishing up my master's degree in in forensics and I was at the time I was gonna work for the FBI that was like my whole future to be a a profiler did you watch a lot of CSI no I never did but you know the funny thing I did my thesis on the CSI effect what's that well, let me tell you what that is. That's like when fools like y'all we're go. Not, we're not, we're not going to talk wa- about weightlifting here. When you watch uh, CIS or C- N- C- NCIS or CSI or whatever, mm-hmm. and you think, wow, look at all this stuff they do in an hour. It's so cool. And then you become a juror, and you know it really messes up the system now because people are like, well, what do you mean you don't have his fingerprints in an hour? You know, and, and it just <laughs> right. it like messes up what murders and shit. And so that's why. <laughs> Every case has DNA evidence. But I never watched it before <laughs> I did this. And they pay for it every time. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you plug in your fingerprint in, and then like in two minutes, you know, you have the whole history of the guy. It's just well, kind of not real life. If you haven't broken <laughs> a law and been arrested before, your fingerprint's aren't on file anyway. Have you all got the new iPhone? Because oh, it has yeah. a fingerprint scanner, and now that F- the FBI is going to have all of our fingerprints. Well, Seriously. I, I was in the military, so they already had my fingerprints. Uh, okay. So. And that, and that, arrested. And that other thing. <laughs> yeah. You're probably already on all the lists. He blames it on the military, I'm, though. I'm on a lot of lists. You're on a lot of lists <laughs> right now. The NSA is like tired of you. Yeah, they, they. That's why the TSA always searches your bag. Yeah, never they're not, ours. They're not. Uh, <laughs> they're not even like tracking me anymore. They're just like we'll just fuck with them as much as possible. <laughs> like we're not. We're not going to really pinpoint any specific thing. <laughs> not anymore. You're probably in the same boat with your Twitter account. I think NSA's so. NSA's all over you. Yeah. I, I'm a, they probably sit there and laugh hysterically, but they wait for me to tweet about something important like a bomb threat or something, you know? So, but. Well, our show just got flagged. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Never tweet bomb. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Bomb, 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 <laughs> Anyway, so I um, was going to school to be the FBI, and now I'm just a really educated fucking gym owner. <laughs> It's awesome. <laughs> so at, at what point did you guys, did, were you part of the process of opening up Catalyst Athletics or did Greg already have that kind yeah, of the ball rolling? So, no, what had, ha- what had happened was, was he had... That's how life started. M- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he had moved down to San Diego from Chico. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm getting over something. Um, 
And at the time, he had been own he owned the gym with Rob Wolf, which was the fourth ever CrossFit affiliate in the history of the world, the wow. original CrossFit NorCal. Um, and he moved down there. Well, he ended up selling out his share of the gym. So he kind of took the performance menu. Rob and Nikki kept the gym. And then we kind of, you know, he kind of developed Catalyst Athletics as like a training business and stuff. And then we just kind of took that further. And at the time we were training out, you know, coaching people. Well, I had my real job and then I was coaching people out of Coach Bergner's gym. And it just kind of, we just realized, you know, taking with him writing the books and doing all the other stuff that we wanted to do, we needed our own space. So the performance menu stuff, it was just selling subscriptions to that online? And right. That we was did like all of that in our, in our living room. Okay. Yeah. And you know, that was the business at that time. We did some training, but it was mainly like the online presence that we were trying to develop. So I didn't realize you guys were doing performance menu before Catalyst Athletics. Yes, we were. The performance menu's been, uh, been around longer, you know, cause mm-hmm. he and Rob, it started that <clears throat> long time ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just, re- it's kind of like, you know, with anything you need your own space you need your own office um we we were outgrowing our living room we were shipping everything from our dining room um well, that there's no separation between work and everything else exactly in your life. you it's know we would sucky. be watching burn notice and when a commercial came on we'd like run into the office and answer emails and so <laughs> y'all gotta talk to jason Khalifa. I, does right. he like burn notice? <laughs> <laughs> no. oh. Just watch the episode. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we decided we wanted to open our own gym so Greg could have like a lab, so to speak. Right. And I we didn't I didn't want to live down there anymore. And we had been coming up here because his he was born here. His family still his dad still lives in the same house he was lived in his whole life. And so I was like, I want to move up there and let's go. And we moved like a month later and opened the gym. So you guys have the performance menu, you have you got tons of content online, videos mm-hmm. and articles, and then you got books and DVDs, and you guys have you know, pictures, We're pic- so pictures of- We're so full of freaking awesome, it's not even funny. It's overflowing. Yeah, it's you, guys, you guys got a lot going on. Like, how involved are you in creating all that content? What, do, what, do you, what side of that do you handle? Um, I handle, well, you know, Greg is like the mastermind behind everything. You, we, we finally have someone that's like in control of the performance menu, doing the editing and, and finding subscribers, I mean, I'm sorry, contributors for mm-hmm. us and stuff. Mm-hmm. I handle like all the business part of the gym and the business mm-hmm. and um, Greg really handles all of the online presence stuff. You know, he does the website from scratch. I don't know if any of you know this, but we don't have a web guy. Mm-hmm. Like Greg is the web guy. He built that website, which is like one of the most amazing sites. We get, you know, emails, endless emails wanting to know who our web guy is. It's Greg. He built, he coded that all himself. He does wow. all of that content himself. Um, you know, he self-taught or is that a thing he studied? No, it's self-taught. He just learns and, you know, he just gets it. And I think that he's such a perfectionist that he, um, won't allow anybody to come in and take over. Rob's Mm -hmm. always like, you guys need to hire people to take this stuff over. But you know, he wants it done his way. Mm -hmm. It's just like the movie that's coming that I think he'll talk about. He's doing it all himself. He did all the filming himself, all the editing himself, all in there on his Mac, just doing just it all by himself. Sounds like he's working too hard. (laughs) He does. He works a lot. (laughs) He's amazing. Damn. Which, you know, it's, I've been able, we, I've hired and I have, we have like an administrative assistant who also coaches here, but we've kind of turned her into like our administrative assistant who does a lot of the, you know, uh, tedious stuff that needs to get done or like the grunt work. She's like, I came here because I'm really excited to coach and like work with athletes. Cool, cool, cool. You want to come over here? (laughs) Get these files. Get these files. We got a stack and shit. Seriously. Uh, You know what? You want to go get my lunch? (laughs) Uh, I do send her to get my lunch a lot, but I always buy hers too. Uh, But but we've actually taught her now to do the layout of the performance menu. So Greg or I don't have to do it. So we've tried to free up a lot of time, which is good because then... Um, you know, we can step away from the gym and not worry that everything's going to crumble. I want to talk about weightlifting. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Enough of this business stuff. Yeah. Business shit, Uh, man. Let's all retire. I I want to retire so bad. So from, from business or from weightlifting? (laughs) Both. Both. (laughs) I just want to stop doing anything. What's your, what's your biggest accomplishment? Accomplishments. 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 Uh, as a, as an athlete. 
<laughs> Besides that righteous catching of the thing at the wedding when you were 17. Besides yeah, that. That's, that, was, that was probably the best thing I've ever done. <laughs> um, you know... I, I hate to talk about I, I'm, I hate to talk about myself as an athlete because I'm very humble about it. Like I don't I get, don't get your horn out and toot it. I don't feel <laughs> like I have been as revolutionary in the sport as I could have been, and I don't feel I feel that there's much m- other females in this country that are more deserving. I'm kind of like always a bridesmaid, never a bride. You know, mm-hmm. I've I've always been like the alternate on the world team, but but never on the world team or if I'm on the world team like I kind of have this like self-sabotaging thing about me you know like last year or in 2011 for worlds for Paris I was like oh I have a I have a terrible phobia of flying and so the you have to fly there the you thought of ship, I yeah guess, the boat th- man that's the way to go oh my god the <laughs> thought of flying to Paris was giving me major anxiety attacks and so I just like I ha- I couldn't I had to just say I, I can't go I'm not ready I'm, I'm I'm out of shape and I'm hurting which was really a big lie I just did a, well now oh it's god. not gonna be a lie it's just I, I couldn't get on a fucking plane it's all the open now <laughs> that's a weird thing to tell your friends like oh I could have totally went to like the Olympics man but like I don't dig airports homie oh god <laughs> you know it's too many people. really fucking shitty but it's the truth <laughs> like so, what's so terrifying about flying I mean, I don't like it either. I mean, yeah. It's like no, you're no, it's up like in the air and you can like look, like plummet to your death. You have probably a drunk like pilot flying probably, you. Probably. More than likely. You know, and <laughs> it what, scares funny? the shit out of me. Like literally my biggest phobia is having diarrhea on a plane because you know you're going well, to have to you're going to have to get up and go to the bathroom every two seconds everyone's going to be like she yeah. has Explos- diarrhea an explosive that's a, that's a shit totally all over that aluminum pseudo toilet a legit fear it won't go away and then you're going to yeah. leave and then it's all over there forever and then what if you're hitting turbulence and you can't get out of your plane and you're like squeezing your butt together like that's a huge problem well, if for me you lose pressure in the cabin and all this diarrhea starts floating up in your face <laughs> and you can't oh escape my God. i mean <laughs> shit is just amazing it yeah, this so bad. shit is bananas this shit yeah <laughs> okay okay so you've been an alternate on the world team several <laughs> times you know i have lived at, <laughs> this is great i have lived at the training center i've you know i've been ranked when i'm competitive when i compete i'm always ranked in the top 10 um of the united states i'm a national champion um what year was that <laughs> oh, do we? Yeah, it's yeah, well, yeah. been a while, dude. I mean, damn. That was like 1972. <laughs> and as soon as I said it, I was like, ago. oh, she's not going to like that. A question. few years ago, yeah. What were your best lifts? Um, my best snatch is 93 kilos, and my best clean and jerk is 111 kilos. Nice. I've cleaned 112, and I've jerked 118, but together I've only done 111 in competition. Putting it together is tough. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And that's the important bit in life and on the platform. You got to put it together. <laughs> yeah, how do you do that, right? So I, I'm only... As a coach, what's you know, your, your proudest accomplishment, I guess? I think that building what we have here is amazing and, and one of my proudest accomplishments. I think that I really wanted to take what I had from back home at Coach Bergner's. You know, he's like a father to me. He, he walked me down the wedding. This is Coach I mean, here, right? the aisle in the wedding. Oh, really? Yes. That, that picture's awesome. That's from a long time ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's when he was like a young man. Yeah. You got a handsome jawline. Um, <laughs> great elbow he, position. It's <laughs> <laughs> a great rack. <laughs> uh, and it was a family, and I really wanted to create that here. I wanted. I wanted people to have a place to come where they felt at home and they felt like they were loved and that they had something bigger than themselves. And that's what I wanted to accomplish here. And, and I think that we're, we're in that spot. We have a great team. Um, a lot of girls, we all have our periods at the same time now, which, you know, awesome. it's so fucking awesome. You know, we're all like bitchy and Greg's like, Oh God, kill me now. Um, but, but that's what I wanted to Great do. Great for you, terrible for, for, for Greg. Greg. How's that affect the, the, the periodization plan? Seriously. Okay, this well, time yeah, of the month, exactly. I'm fucking leaving. That's my periodization plan. Everyone's in here crying and oh, shit. I'm, I'm going away. Sometimes you have to do that. It's really, really true. <laughs> but I, I, I love, I mean, really, I do honestly love, no bullshitting, no jokes, to see a big group of... <clears throat> 
young uh, aspiring women training together, treating it with respect, knowing it's not going to make them freaks, that it's actually going to empower them and make them more capable of getting out in the world and fucking kicking ass. That is a right. fucking great thing to see. And yeah, it is. And I think that we are the only women's team in this country that all trains together. Coffee's Gym, East Coast Gold, these other women's teams that are amazing. They have amazing athletes, but they don't train together. They're, you know, they're recruited by the coaches and um, but we're the only team that trains together. Every single day That's, we cry together. It's we essential. We cuss together. We sing Britney together. We talk about <sighs> penises together. Like, it's the only... It, we're, we, we're here. <laughs> and we're a family. And, and we love each other. And I think it's amazing. It, it, it takes a sport bigger than just you. Because, like, when I come in and I'm having a really shitty day, I can look over at Kara and be like, oh, my God, she's fucking killing it. And you live vicariously through your teammates and they think that but as you asked that's my proudest accomplishment is to come into this gym and look at these people here and know that they want to be here and that they're a part of something and like this is their second home god damn that's awesome hey there you go uh, I'm speechless well, again. It's yeah. fantastic. I mean, basically, you started a cult here. That's Am I, I heard. so good at this? You're, you're, doing, you're rocking it. You're rocking it. You need no, your own podcast. I don't know why you have so many Twitter followers. <laughs> I know, right? You should Vine. You should uh, Vine. Do you do Vine? No, I just started Instagram. Oh, all right. All right we're going to go. I'm going to give you a Vine tutorial before we leave, okay? Okay. What super, is that? Do I get... Cool. Can I... Can I capture like little videos? Yes. You know, I'm not Can a you selfie person little though. Videos? I'm oh, not okay. a selfie person. I'm not like one no. of the duck lip like pushing the boob out selfies all day long. No, it could be. We could. <laughs> I wasn't a selfie guy until mine came around either. Really? So, but now selfies at least every other video. I think so. it's kind of irritating. Like people take selfies of them, especially when they're like all wet and they're like laying out by the pool. Oh, I like that. And they're taking a selfie of themselves. What are you talking about? It's like at least put a fucking I, I crab in the, the picture. You're following. Who are these people you're following? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You can judge them. <laughs> right, yeah. right, right. Well, I guess okay. My if, Instagram, my Instagram feed is boring. <laughs> if it sounds like you got an awesome. If one. it's like super heavy, is next to the pool. Men, hairy men, weightlifters doing that. I, I don't want to be a part no, of that. No, it's like when we, it's like the attention whores, right? They want like everybody to be like, oh, you're so hot. Look at your boobs. Oh my god. I hate it when hot chicks put their boobs on it. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> Have some respect, ladies. Have some self decency and restraint. It's like at least if you're on the beach, like taking a picture of your wedding tits like at least be laying next to a crab or something so that you could be like so look context. at this crab there's context to this, <laughs> picture, exactly right? so rather than it's like blatantly look at my tits you're like oh look at the crab i just saw on the beach <laughs> i i have nothing to disagree with. That's fucking... <laughs> uh, you know, that way it can be comical and <laughs> and se- sensual at the same By time the way, I, I do that play with my wife I, I, I look at a picture with hot tits i go Wife, look! Look at this crab. Can you believe that exactly. species is indigenous to that beach? I didn't fucking realize that. Whoa, and then see man. you men looking at the pictures could have a reason to be looking at it. Like, wow, look at that surf! It's like look at the sunset. So good the today. sunset is so jiggly. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, enough of that. Sorry, uh, ladies. All right, I think that's a good place to take a pause, <laughs> yeah. take a break, and when we come back, we're gonna have Greg get right on. Thank you all so much for Thanks having for me. Us. We had a blast. Thanks, okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we're going to have another. Welcome back to Technique Quad. My name is Doug Larson from the Barbell Shrug Podcast. You can find us at barbellshrug.com. Today I want to talk about clean and snatch high pulls. So this is kind of a, a movement that a lot of people aren't very comfortable with. Uh, for some people, it really screws them up. Uh, but a lot of people like them. And depending on your particular preference, you, know, you, you could be one or the other. So if you happen to be a person that likes it, then this is gonna be a great show for you. If you happen to be a person that doesn't like it, there might be a reason you don't like it. Maybe you're not very good at it or you just don't feel like your technique is the same as it is when you do the full movement. Hopefully after watching this, um, you'll be a little bit better at it and maybe you'll start to like these movements. So here's what they look like if you have never seen them before. For a clean, I'm here, exact same technique. Okay. All I'm doing is basically pulling elbows high for the snatch, again, the exact same thing. I'm here. So bar is popping off upper thigh, just like a normal clean, and right off my hips, just like a normal snatch. And I'm guiding the weight straight up, elbows high, just like my elbows should be for the regular movement. So um, one reason we like to do these is because uh, for some people, um, doing this lets them know if they are being pulled forward or if they're being pulled backward by the weight 
Some people will go here. Now you saw when I did it, I went straight up and straight down. My feet basically didn't move at all. If you're going heavy, heavier than this, then you, know, you might take a little step back, but you definitely don't want to be pulled forward. You'll see some people will go like this. They'll do their snatch high pull, and they'll pull the weight away from them, either if they hit low or if their hips come up, it'll pull them forward. So, um, you know, you get a lot of feedback on the full movement, but with the high pull also, if you can't come here and pull straight up and straight down, then you also know if you're being, uh, if you're getting off balance, if your technique is skewed in some way where it's pulling you forward. So, getting pulled backward isn't as big of a deal, but ideally, you come straight up and straight down. Um, the movement's basically the same as a clean or a snatch pull, except usually it's a little bit lighter. That way when I get to here, I go, I go to explode, I shrug, and then with the pull, it's usually heavier, and so the weight kind of floats, and then I drop it on the ground. This is lighter, and so again, I'm just guiding it with my arms. I'm keeping close to my body. I never want to curl the weight. That's another reason that we would do these movements if someone, if someone is chronically someone chronically pulls the weights like this, if you're the person that does a curl, especially if you're a person that stops right here, uh, then this is a good movement to help you get that more upright row type position uh, where your hands are staying close to you, elbows are staying above the hands. That way when I go to rack, the bar is here and I'm just rotating around the bar to get into my rack position. So if you're curling, this is a good option for you. That's a very good point. So, if you have a, a shoulder injury and you can't do anything overhead for the time being, um, I'm a good example of that. I do a lot of snatch deadlifts, snatch pulls, and snatch high pulls because I don't do a lot of overhead work um, anymore. It just it wreaks havoc on my shoulder. Uh, after I had a shoulder surgery after an MMA fight a couple years ago, I don't do much in the way of overhead squats and jerks anymore. So, for me, I can't catch it overhead, but I can go here, and I can still get the most athletic part of the movement done, which really is the explosive second pull part of the movement. I can stand in good posture, I can jump, get on my toes, and accelerate the weight, and work on pushing into the ground really, really hard, really, really fast, you know, which helps with, with jumping and running and almost any sport on the planet, on the planet basically. Uh, so I can still get the athletic benefit of snatches without actually catching it overhead. You know, doing overhead squats and whatnot and full snatches has their own set of benefits, and that's great, um, but I can get uh, a big chunk of those benefits by just doing um, the pulls and the deadlifts. As far as common errors go, uh, the common errors are pretty much the exact same um, as they would be on cleans and snatches. You want to always, to give you a, a brief review of good technique on cleans and snatches, you want to always you know, get to a neutral spine, butt down, and I want to start with my butt too high, so I'm here, my butt stays down, I pass my knee, I push my knees under the bar until the bar touches the upper thigh, it never touches any lower than that, and then from here, my arms stay down, I jump, and catch the weight right on my shoulders, I always want to have my elbows nice and high, if I want to open my hands, I can, if I want to close them, I can too, but my elbows should pretty much be right in front of me, some people get away with being more like right here, that's okay, but I definitely don't want to have it floating off of my chest. I want to have it, kill my microphone, I want to have it right here. Okay. Um, a great demo that we do for that to show that you don't need to be grabbing, to show that you don't need to be grabbing the weight is the, the no hands clean. Uh, this would be a great one for everyone to go practice. I'm not recommending you do this, but it's kind of fun if you want to, is to be here, <coughs> to be here and just pull it up onto your shoulders and catch it. That way you know that you can be right here and not have to really be grabbing the weight. My pinkies are actually off the bar. I'm here, okay? I can front squat in that position, no problem. Okay, so that's especially a good thing if you're a person who, for whatever reason, you don't have a lot of external rotation, range of motion, or wrist flexibility. And sometimes you'll lose one hand. There's plenty of people that lose one hand like this, they'll come here, but since I'm throwing it in the right spot, my elbows are high, it doesn't matter, 
I can still stand up, get my position back, reset my feet, and I'm ready to go into my jerk. Uh, if you have any more questions about clean or snatch high pulls, you can go to barbellshrug.com, click the ask a question tab at the top of the page, and you can ask us a question there, and maybe we'll do a technique wad on that in the future. Jason Khalifa, CrossFit Games champion. Jason Khalifa, ladies and gentlemen, the 2008 CrossFit Games champion. Anthony. Bother. That thing needed a warm up. And we're back. Yeah. We're at, hanging out at Catalyst Athletics here in Sunnyvale, California. It's a beautiful place. We kicked Amy off the uh, microphone. We brought Greg in. <laughs> Old Greg Everett. You probably know him. If you don't, you should. You should go to CatalystAthletics.com. Check it out. Performance menu. Uh, and I'll let you promote the rest of your stuff. How did you get into weightlifting, Greg? Oh, man. Uh, I learned the lifts in, uh, when I was in high school. But the problem was, uh, you know, my high school weight room was like a universal machine, two benches, and a power rack with the pen so bent that you couldn't get them out. Did you have an old uh, school hip sled? The old, what's no. that thing called? Uh, the 45 degree, like if you got that thing and everybody would load up like four plates and it was so, had a weird like wrenching mechanism in there. Those old high school gyms are so fucking terrible, man. We did have the cable stack <laughs> machine attached to the no wall idea. so you could do the, the <laughs> oh, that's so dope. and get stuck in it like the, uh, the kid in uh, dodgeball. <laughs> that's about all we had. So, you know, I had like, I had nowhere to go. I trained at, uh, you know, Gold's Gym in Mountain View while I was in high school. You know, it was the, the, one of the five people who was there at, you know, six in the morning every day with the goofball with his belt, the Walkman tucked inside it and yeah, all that kind of stuff. Goes, man. <laughs> so, uh, the CD skip now. So when, you got, when you went to the disc, man, it was pretty tough. There you yeah. are at five o'clock in the morning, your Zubaz and your Doc Martin shoes. And you're like, God, it's early in the morning to squat, but I'm going to squat. It was the same guy, though, who had the, the Walkman inside his belt, whose little wife, like this big, would hand him his dumbbells for all his bench presses. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> come on, man. Like, you're killing me here. This is why you come at this time of the day, right? But, oh, damn. So, uh, you know, I, I kind of got by with, with uh, what I could and training in Gold's Gym, of course. They did have a lot of power racks. I will say that. That was nice. But, of course, no really... Uh, place to do the lifts mm -hmm. and then uh, when I moved to Chico to go to my third and final college I met Rob Wolf um, because my neighbor got me to do a website for the BJJ studio owner that Rob was sharing space with so he had just moved from Seattle where he started the first CrossFit affiliate with uh, Nick Nibbler and Dave Werner which they're still up there they each have their own places now but mm -hmm. um, and so finally now I had space where we had, you know, big open rubber area and, and bumpers and bars that spun. It was like, oh, now I can actually do something with this. So that kind of not just rekindled my interest in it, but it gave me an opportunity. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then, um, so let's see, after a couple years there, um, I had met Mike Bergner. Um, I had met Amy. I'm sure she told you about how she ignored me for the she first She said she thought months. you were so ugly when she first met you. Yeah. <laughs> like, who's this asshole hitting that, on that me? That hasn't changed. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> it's, all, it's all wit and charm. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's all wit and charm, except she didn't pay attention to me, so she couldn't get any of that. Amy, oh, Amy, come on. God. But now I got her legally. She's mine. <laughs> um, but so, you know, after a couple years, you know, uh, I decided to move down to uh, train with Mike Bergner full time because I figured, hey, I'm not getting any younger. I, I want this opportunity. I'm at a point in my life where I'm relatively young and unattached. So, say, so, hey, why not? So I went down You're there. You self taught and, until then? Yeah. So, uh, what, what year was that? Were you able to learn online at all? Or was that no, there was nothing online at that point. Yeah. There were no the, internet. The only, yeah. yeah, the only thing online at that point about weightlifting was pretty much Mike Bergner's website, which at that time mm -hmm. was uh, like a Microsoft Word document oh. with like three pictures of the Damn. Rocky Mountains. Damn. That, that was it. <laughs> so, the, the site that Bergner has now is the one that I built for him a number of years back. Oh, wow. Uh, so yeah, self-taught until that point, and then, so that was 2006, um, I believe, I, I think early 2006, and then we were down there, I think I heard Amy telling you, we came up here in the end of 2008 and opened this place, so it was a good, yeah, good couple of years to it's actually like, get into it. Yeah. Well, this place is fantastic, that's, that's man. about when I started following you guys, Yeah. so probably, I, I didn't realize I was like following you guys 
pretty close to the beginning, I guess. Early adopter. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, thanks. No, I don't pay any attention to your website. <laughs> I don't either. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. I haven't in months, actually, working on this, uh, this movie. It's just uh, in my head so far up the ass of this movie, I haven't even looked. I haven't written an article in like six months, probably. So you guys have a documentary coming out on weightlifting. I don't th- has there been a weightlifting documentary been done before? Not to my knowledge. That um, someone made a movie that was about Cheryl Hayworth, and so oh, there there was yeah. a there was obviously a lot about weightlifting, but it wasn't about weightlifting specifically. It was more about kind of Cheryl, and it was about the character uh, piece, right? you know, like body image and stuff like that. It's actually it right. was a really good movie. It was really cool. I liked watching it, but it wasn't about the sport itself. Mm-hmm. And of course, it's focused on one person, so you don't mm-hmm. get um, you don't get a lot of a breadth in there. So. This movie hopefully is going to be, you know, it's a little bit of history, um, uh, but primarily it's about kind of the, the current state of the sport in this country, which of course, as everyone knows, is struggling to say the least. Um, although it, it has picked up. I'll say it, say it I'm feeling really optimistic about it the, le- the last year. So I'm like, fuck, man, we have now. Because I, I mean, I, I was lucky enough to be sort of introduced to weightlifting. <laughs> maybe like 1999 when I got out of fucking football or 2000 and then joined the lab at the University of Memphis and got going with, you know, Dr. Schilling, Dr. Chu and all those guys <clears throat> getting exposed to stone and gar hammers working all that. And it was not good then. And this last year I'm like, we have now really impressive up and coming lifters like guys like Kendrick who are as strong as anybody. And it's, it's starting to click and come together. Guys like Jared and, it's the young guys that man. That, that's it's exciting. And the young girls. We have a lot of junior lifters right now who are are just bawling. Like they're they're in a good place. We have um, Zygmunt Smallshirts out at the Olympic Training mm-hmm. Center in Colorado Springs. He's a former Olympian. He was Polish a Polish team? national yeah. coach. Mm-hmm. Um, he's badass. And now man. he's he's been there <laughs> since I think 2008. So now he's had that time to to make the adjustment to the different environment and to the different athletes because it, it's a totally different story right in a number of ways and so now i think he's really gotten it dialed in and his lifters are just fucking doing and really donovan well. donovan yeah you got damn, donovan d'angelo beast. osorio choma amici uh, jenny arthur uh you know jared fleming all these guys who are just <sighs> doing a really good job i don't so. know man. i i like our chances in like this next like five to ten years i really do i'm feeling really fucking good about it i will support my local weightlifter you guys yeah, have any big, i agree you guys have any big up-and-comers coming out of your gym right now we definitely have, we've got some up and comers. Our problem is that our weightlifters are all too old. You know what I mean? The, the weightlifting is one of those sports. Like what a is lot too of old? Uh, you. <laughs> oh, I'm, too, I'm right. too old. I can't and me and Doug. Yeah. I, I've, I've managed to train about three months of, of this year so far, and it's September. So There you go. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, but what, what do you think too old is like to be, well, it, to really pursue it? To enjoy the sport and to do fairly well and to have fun, there isn't a too old. To become a world champion, a world level competitor, basically anything after like 14 years old is too old, uh, and that, that's just the real. I mean, you look at you look at the best athletes in the world in any sport; they have that foundation. They were started young. That doesn't mean you're definitely or you're necessarily starting in weightlifting uh, at a high level at that age, but you you are kind of being channeled in that direction. You know, you're yeah. being guided and being developed in the long term. And, and so we have most of our athletes are you know, they're, they're leftovers from other sports. Right. Like they were football players or they were wrestlers or volleyball players or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's not even so much that they chose weightlifting. Like, Hey, I don't want to play the sport anymore. I want to be a weightlifter. It was more like, I got too many concussions to play football anymore. Right. Now, right. now what am I going to do? Um, and so that's fine. It's, it's, you know, a lot of concussions is probably good for weightlifting. Cause then you don't know that you can't lift that weight. Right. You just not smart like, enough to like not get under the bar. So I got, I got go. a dumb, strong kid. He's great. That's yeah. Right. So <laughs> it's, uh, Pull. He's got a big forehead. I think he'll do fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah brow ridge. <laughs> but we've got um, probably our our, our our front runner right now is a, a girl named Tamara Solari. Is our super heavyweight? Um, she uh, let's see. She actually came in third at the nationals in July. Um, she's and only so cleaned one thirty. She just cleaned one thirty yesterday. Jeez. So and that's what two eighty six in in uh, the imperial <laughs> measurement. So yeah, Man. she's uh, she's kicking Damn. ass. Now, what's her age? Twenty seven. So that's what I'm saying. If she was 20, I'd be talking. It sucks so much, man. That's, is she gonna be? Is she gonna listen to this and get mad at you now? I have to, she won't get mad. It's not yeah. my fault. She's 27. This is. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault. Drake you're doesn't care. Well, you know, <laughs> it's it's the the reality is that you work with what you've got, right? Yeah. And in this country, we. Uh, 
like I said, we, we get who comes to us. I, I can't go to a sixth grade PE class with my clipboard and be like, all right, I need you guys to line up. We're going to do a bunch you, of like leaps I and bounds you. and, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm going to like, you know, feel your quad. Like that's creepy. You know, we can't do that. Um, and, and so we have, we have to rely on people, f- you know, finding the sport on their own essentially because yeah. there's not a whole lot of exposure. It's not like you could turn on ESPN and you're like, oh, CrossFit Games followed by weightlifting. It's like, no, if you see Snatch and Clean and Jerk, it's CrossFit. Yeah. And that's a good start. It's a really good start. It's better and it's, than before. It's, it's mm-hmm. made a, a huge impact. It's made a huge difference, but we need more exposure of the sport of weightlifting itself. Do you think this is the path that CrossFit, for whatever good and bad, will provide the exposure to young kids and they will see, oh, that's pretty cool if I also compete in that? I mean, Oh, absolutely. Like a guy like me, like I, I have... I was long since too beat up to ever consider racking a bar. But by the time I was fucking a senior in high school, that window was <laughs> shut down. But my son, my son has whatever talent my wife and I ever started with. He's, he's already doing ring work. He's already trying to pick up my barbell when I'm doing deadlifts and stuff in the gym. is cute as shit. Of course, it's cute as shit. But I can now tell him, hey, look. Too. Like, I can make sure that <laughs> he Just, just wait. <laughs> I, can make sure he does, I can make sure he knows what it is like to have a good overhead position, a good rack position. Yeah. Before he learns how to not be flexible in the arms, before he starts benching fucking six days a week like I did when I was in high school, all that stuff. Well, I mean, that's what it's going to do. Is it, A lot of people have gotten overly excited about CrossFit's impact on weightlifting. They, they misunderstand it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's bringing more money into the sport indirectly because a lot of coaches and weightlifters can now coach and give seminars and you know write articles and do all these things that allow them to stay more connected to the sport and not have real jobs. Yeah. Um, you know, it's I, I credit CrossFit with allowing me to have this business. You know, that's that's probably 90 percent of our audience. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. But the, really what it's going to do is the kids, like you said, who are growing up, seeing their parents snatch and clean and jerk, seeing their older brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's not it's not so fucking strange. You know what I mean? Like, it's not this oddball sport anymore. It's this thing like, oh, yeah, yeah my dad did that when I was a kid. I want Max to go to school like an elementary school like. What, you assholes don't do front squats? I thought everybody did front squats and, and pulls and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What, is this, well, what is this place? Right. That's the thing is every kid, every high school, every junior high, every elementary school, they got a track team, they got a basketball team, you know, football, soccer, all these things. That's normal. And so, you know, weightlifting is never going to be football. That's just a pipe dream at best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it, it, you can get it into more schools. You know, look at the Doherty brothers, Kevin and, uh, and Paul Doherty. They, they're each um, high school PE teachers. They have huge weightlifting programs. That's where Donovan Ford came from. That's where Choma Michi came from. That's where uh, D'Angelo Osorio came from. They find all these um, amazing lifters because they have this great program where they can funnel 300 kids a year through it. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if you if you have 300 kids and you can't find a couple good ones, you're doing something horribly wrong. And so imagine that if not only not every high school in the country, but if 10 high schools in every state in this country had 300 oh, kids man. a year going through it. Think of how oh, many yeah. potential weight lifters. Well, it had. probably is on many in many respects. I mean, these kids have good economic and social support systems largely across this country of the of the millions of potential young athletes like in China or Russia I have to think that on a little bit smaller scale we have a similar good chance with all the our, the resource at our disposal in this nation. Oh, we're, we can, we're a big yeah, country well, compared yeah, to like yeah, a lot of European here's countries. Here's the thing with weightlifting though is there are two quotes actually from the movie that are perfect. Jim Schmitz uh, said you know speaking about China specifically but a lot of these countries is weightlifting is a meal ticket. Okay, you know, the if, yeah. uh, Chinese lifter, Armenian lifter, whatever, you can get a good job, get an education by being a weightlifter. Here, people give up those things to become a weightlifter. You got to put off school. You got to put off a career um, because you're struggling to pay bills to train full time, to train twice a day, six days a week. Yeah. Um, and you know, uh, now I forget what the other thing I was going to say was. I think it was Bob Takano. It's the the reality is that. Um, the U.S. is not really good at things that don't make money, right? So we're really good at swimming. We're good at track and field. We're good at football because those are fucking huge money makers, right? Look at the endorsement deals these guys get. Not only do they get the salaries from the teams, but they're getting millions of dollars a year for wearing shoes, right? Our best weightlifters get a couple hundred bucks a month from the USOC. God, fucking shit. That's it. You know it's what I shameful, mean? man. Yeah. Like the, the the best thing I can do for my lifters, we can't pay them. Sometimes we can help with travel a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've gotten them a, a protein sponsorship from Heavy Athletics Nutrition. They've been great. Pure Farmer sponsors them. We get fish oil and stuff like that. But that's pretty much They're it. Good folks. Yeah, I think I remember seeing um, 
who was our other super heavyweight lady? Not uh, well, we went to London. Um, Holly Mangold. Holly, the other one, mm-hmm. not Holly. Sarah Robles. Yeah. Sarah, Sarah. Oh, yeah. Well, she was talking about how she was fucking living in poverty as she was completing her preparation to go to the fucking London Games. Like at least right before you think there'd be some resource to support her. Yeah, you know, it's, God, it's, it's a lot of uh, groveling and begging and, you know, scraping uh, change out of the couch. But uh, it's it's unfortunate. And, that, and then again, you know, CrossFit has done a good job um, and inadvertently, I assume. But it, it has allowed so many coaches now and, and lifters to make some money, at least. And so it allows them to they still have to work. They still have to earn money. They still can't train as full time professional lifters like they need to, like the people they're competing against internationally. But it's a step in the right direction, and so we get more exposure. We can actually get some sponsorship and some money. And this is what frustrates me when you see people go, "Oh, I know what we gotta do to fix. We just gotta get really fucking strong." Like it was so <laughs> fucking obvious and simple. I'll oh, just get look. Look at those guys. How good they always gotta get gooder than we are now. Yeah, it's and weird we that we better. never fucking thought of that. Come on, man. Is that is that <laughs> is that the fine detail you're using in your thought process? Is to say the most obvious stupid shit that you think these professional coaches aren't haven't considered a million times a day. Fuck. Come it's on, it's man. a little frustrating. Yeah. It's a little frustrating to be second guessed by uh, people who have no exposure to the actual sport they have no experience they've never coached a weight never even talked to a fucking weightlifter yeah um and so there's a lot of assumptions and the, and there's a lot of really big key important things that go conveniently overlooked the money situation is one of them um you know china has a million weightlifters a million you don't have to be a good su- weightlifter. yeah but here's the thing <laughs> you can you can do whatever you want and you can get these guys strong and you can break as many as you, you, you uh, happen to break because you got 10 more in line yeah. Yeah. that are just as good. You have guys in there, uh, you know, I've been told stories by people who've gone and visited some of the training centers. It's a routine thing. On a Tuesday morning, you've got the guys going in there uh, lifting more than the world record clean and jerk. No one's even fucking watching. It's just a routine thing. It happens. And you'll yeah. never know that guy's name because they don't need him. <laughs> the, the hard, the sorry, hard part I can't, here. I can't understand that shit. The hard part in this country is getting to the Olympics, getting to the World Championships. The hard time, or the hard part for those guys in those countries, is getting on the team to get there, right? Because there's so many of them. They have the talent. They don't have the pro sports that we have here that are pulling the talent away. You know, you get a kid who's a, not even that good of a football player. He can go get his college education paid for playing football by being okay at yeah go, play, being go, great go at to a d2 it. school get a good education uh you know w- like what are you going to say like hey no no you should be a weightlifter i can guarantee you a life of poverty and obscurity instead you know <laughs> keep talking <laughs> so yeah <laughs> the, only, the only americans that weightlift are the ones that really love it they're, yeah, not, they're exactly. not trying to get out of anything yeah but I, and, I mean i've seen a lot of beauty in that though because i see a lot of guys who just have really laid it all on at this altar for the sake of this of the sport it's really i don't want to say it's the smartest thing always but I, you god damn it you gotta appreciate what they're doing and you gotta I, try to support them with the best of our ability yeah I mean, that that's definitely one of the the most appealing things is that the, it's a small community but you know that everyone in it is really dedicated it's not a, a lot of sports if there's money in it you can be in it for the wrong reasons you could fucking hate playing whatever sport it is but you're getting paid 10 million bucks a year you're going to suck it up, you know? Yeah. Not that I feel sorry for you. You get to fucking play ball and make millions of dollars. Like, oh, oh yeah, I feel terrible. But, uh, you know, with, with weightlifting, it's like you do it because you love it and you do it whether or not anybody's watching because, you know, you enjoy the process. You, you take pride in it. And, you know, I, I like being a part of that and knowing that everybody you interact with is going to be essentially, you know, on that same page. You got the movie coming out. It's called Weightlifting. American Weightlifting. American Weightlifting. Documentary comes out. What's the date? November sixteenth. November sixteenth. Yeah. Okay. And how how can people watch that? They can. Uh, the easiest way go to AmericanWeightliftingFilm.com. dot com. Um, that'll have everything. So it'll be available on DVD. Um, it'll be streaming, download, all that stuff. So it'll be very very easy, easily accessible. Market calendars. Yeah. Is there is there anything in the movie that we should uh, look forward to? The whole movie. The whole yeah. movie, What's, yeah. What is the problem? Have, have, I didn't, I didn't like, a, intentionally put any teasers or something. Is there a twist? You is there Amy, a twist at the end? You called Amy old, and then you called his <laughs> movie <laughs> shit. is that I was Bruce Willis the whole time. <laughs> there you go. That's all I wanted did to Did you hear. narrate it in a good Batman voice? I did Bob not to, narrate it. Bob Tagano, 19 whatever. <laughs> Bob Bell, man, greatness. I skipped, skipped the narration thing. There's like uh, two seconds of titling in the beginning, and the rest of it is all interviews. and Sweet. So... So you did, was this your first foray into such a... I mean, that's not a small undertaking, man. No, it took me four years. 
And uh, oh, it was uh, it was a terrible mistake. Uh, <laughs> but you know, the, the that, thing that's that, what I was looking for. The, <laughs> the hardest part for me about making a movie is that I had no fucking idea how to make a movie. And uh, but the, the fact was, I had this idea, something I wanted to do, and no one else was going to do it. So I figured, well, you know, why not? I'll just make it happen. Fuck my love and, that uh, attitude, though. So just dove in the pool. You know, the, the the reality is that um, you know it, it was made on a, a shoestring budget because it's fucking weightlifting in the U S like yeah. no one's coming in and giving me money. But that was the whole point, right? It's, it stays with the whole theme of the sport is that we, we have no money where it's an independent sports, a small group of people. And, uh, if we want things to happen, we got to make them happen. So I figured it should be a good example and no excuses, you know, maybe someone will see that and actually have some talent and skill and ability and resources and do something better that gets even more exposure. I'm going to, I'm going to purchase it. I'm going to stream it five times a day. God damn it. <laughs> no, I, I, I just feel this being here is a, is a kind of a special thing, man, because I feel this, this, Amy's right, is a warm feeling, this place, and it just, every time I have these kind of conversations, it goes, fuck, man, I, more than anything I could ever do in my pathetic, very average lifting career in, a, in another obscure sport that no one really gives a shit about in powerlifting, I go, what makes me really happy is the idea of giving whatever I can give to some kid, give him a shot at doing something like a, a national caliber meet one day or maybe making the Olympics, that is a fucking worthwhile thing to pursue. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's really special. Yep. Yeah. It is cool standing in here. I've been looking at pictures of this place off your website for, for years. And it was kind of cool walking in. Almost surreal. It's the, it's the uh, fourth wall that no one ever sees over there. That's oh, very yeah. true. Yeah. Well, well, Amy, now. Amy sitting in a field. She did not lift on that grass. Come on. That's not <laughs> good footing. Yeah, that's right after she snatched that. Oh. Right, right in the grass. Sat huh? down, took a break, got a little water. Sweet. A photographer walked by. So it seems that most gyms don't really make any good money off their competitors specifically. It seems there's like a handful of competitors and that's like the real reason the gym's yeah. in operation. And then there's a, a big group of people who are kind of like the regular fitness people that are actually producing enough money to make it where the competitors can actually oh, yeah. train. Is that kind of how it is as well? Here. Yeah, and it's it's beyond that. It's not just the, the, the fitness people in the gym. It's it's the entire other side of the business, the books and DVDs, seminars, mm -hmm. all that stuff is what finances the weightlifting team. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the weightlifting coaching doesn't make me money. It costs me money. Right. You know, it costs me. We told that to somebody one time and they got, she got really mad. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. she thought I was lying to her. No, but, it's, you know, it's, that's the reality. And it's not that we don't love all of our clients, but that's, right. you know, the simple fact is that we could not run a competitive weightlifting team without all those other you know, streams of income. Right. You guys have a lot of stuff. You got the performance menu, you got, you got books and DVDs. Like you want to kind of go through all the stuff you guys have. You got a ton, a ton of things available. We actually promoted your book, uh, in a recent episode, maybe two episodes yeah, top ago, 10 books. top 10 books and your Olympic weightlifting book was what the first or second one we told people to read. I think right? it was, number I think one, it was the first number one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hey, great resource. What's the number one. Say it now. Yeah. It, <laughs> that's it, right. It Just one. tell them. It was like your word I, I personally have the weightlifting bias. So there you go. I, yeah. I was like, that's your number one training book because if you're not weightlifting, I don't think you're you're training. You're subhuman. So. Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we uh, we use one of your DVDs for staff training a while back as well. So go ahead and run through all your stuff because we we use everything it's all you guys have. Great, yeah. All yeah. right. Well, let's see if I can remember it all. So we we do books, uh, publish books. We have uh, two of mine. Um, my first book, which is the the big thick one, Olympic weightlifting complete guide for athletes and coaches. I did Olympic weightlifting for sports, which is like a um, the whole idea was to make it more like a simple, more accessible thing for, for people who are not interested in being competitive weightlifters. They don't want all the details. They mm -hmm. want, hey, how do I get in here and learn how to that, snatch That was for like the jerk. football coach. Or, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the uh, meathead version. <laughs> we've got a, a couple DVDs out that kind of go with those books, you know, just instructional things. Um, I published Bob Ticano's book recently, which is all about, you know, kind of Soviet style programming. It's kind of... You know, uh, Bud Charniga has translated all these Russian texts. Um, He's a feisty man. And w which is, it's been <laughs> like a fantastic Bud. resource, but they're, they're not super cohesive. Like, it's tough to get good information out of them because it's, it's basically a collection of articles. And it's, uh, you know, from the 70s primarily. And so, Takano's book is like kind of the Americanized version of the Soviet system. So, it's, it's very well laid out. It's I very clear. Mm -hmm. I it's have pretty it. awesome. You have that one? I actually have it here. Yeah. Can I borrow we, it and we read talked it? about yeah, it on, back the, on the, the top 10 episode. Yeah, it, it, did, it, did, it, it did come up. At the, yeah. very, at the very end, we, we talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. Word. And uh, we have uh, Matt Foreman's book out, which is 
uh, kind of the, the opposite end of the spectrum of Takano's. You know, it's it's more uh, you know anecdotes and and funny stories. And Matt's a super funny guy, but you know kind definitely like has progress. training information. In him. Yeah, that's what I do. Blabber on the radio and blabber <laughs> on fucking print. A little you know? more philosophical. Yeah, I was looking at that book over there. It, it reminded me of, of your book. It's like it's not like do this program. It's kind of like training philosophy and, and funny articles. And you need that, man, because like there's. There, I always see the, the three things. There's like the, the science you need to know. You need to know the physics of this. You need to understand how the mechanics are important and why. You need to know design and how you take that and manipulate it in some sort of strategic way to get an effect. And then there's this, this third part, which I call sort of the, the folk knowledge, like the, the shit you learn during the grind, the relationships, the belief, the frustrations, that all, it closes that third critical gap. And if you don't have that, then the other things don't really make sense. You're just... You might as well be a professor who never trains or coaches or right. you know, what have you. That's that's the key element. And the humor and the frustration and the and everything that comes with it is like the closing big thing for me. Yeah. So well, what was the name of the book, book again? Bones of Iron. Bones of Iron. And that's that's actually a really good point. I, you know, we get so many emails and, and things from people who are like, hey, I want to be a weightlifting coach. You know, what do I do? It's like, well, you got to be a weightlifter. You have to go live that life for a while. You, you have to be in that environment because, like you said, you could know – uh, you know what it says in all these books. You can read my book till you're blue in the face, but you know if you haven't experienced that environment and that uh, you know that atmosphere, it doesn't really mean a whole lot. So what about the performance menu? What's what's that all about? Oh, uh, performance menu, man. We're coming up on year nine of that thing, which is damn, dude. That that's like the best kept wow. secret on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> We've been publishing that thing since I was born, pretty much. So uh, it's it's a monthly um, digital journal. Comes out in PDF. Now you can send it to your Kindle. You can do all kinds of jiggy shit with it. Um, <laughs> I thought you just said jiggy. Yeah, I was gonna say that was like so. It's uh, it's was like performance most, menu. Most com, and it's it's thirty bucks a year. It's dirt cheap for twelve issues a year. Or you, we have a premium subscription now for a hundred bucks a year, which gives you access to all the back issues. So if you're paying attention, that's nine years of back issues it's like 550 yeah, it's articles gold mine man yeah oh okay. that gives you 50 percent off in the catalyst store too have we do we tell people we got to hit that on the on the episode we do digital online resources and shit for the show because we didn't do that yet we no we just did books we'll, yeah. do, we'll do uh we'll, save you know, that for, we'll do like our favorite blogs fa- favorite favorite fa- blogs. favorite blogs yeah we'll do our blogs one day and we'll do you know videos another day yeah, that's gonna yeah. be on the top of the list too yeah i've been getting hit with people like you know, like you said books but is there any websites so we'll do websites yeah. one day. One Top ten days. websites. You guys got anything else? Yes. Uh, well, we've been doing seminars for years, but now we actually have a certification program, mm-hmm. um, which we just launched, you know, a few months ago. So we have a couple different levels, and it's a combination of seminars and, and testing and all that kind of stuff. So it's mm-hmm. all based on my book and the seminars. Um, Certifiably jiggy is that the course? <laughs> That's level three. <laughs> the na- oh. Keys to the spaceship. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But yeah, so we've got uh, we've got a level one in Charleston, South Carolina coming up in, in uh, April. That's going to be our only East Coast one next year, mm-hmm. and then we'll have a couple more here. So I I just don't have the time and the energy anymore to travel. Like I used to travel all over the place. The last last big travel one I did was Copenhagen a couple years ago, and I was just like, I'm fucking done. Um, you know, there there's so many weightlifters and coaches out there doing seminars. Mm-hmm. I figured I don't need to fly my ass all over the place. Get a little saturated, maybe. Or- yeah. So I figure that if, if people really want to learn from me directly, then they can come here and, uh, you know, I can do a better job here. We have the space, we have the equipment. I have a full coaching staff of like six people. Which is own. And so, you know, b- people get a, a better experience here and I don't have to take years off my life traveling. Yeah, that's like Amy said, this is your laboratory. Which I, I fucking love that way of specifically describing a gym. It's really what it is. It's like your space where a unique thing emerges from your interaction with a whole host of individual human beings. Like you can't reproduce this anywhere else. You can't. And, it, you know, if, if I feel like if you're going to be putting out educational material and things like that, it has to be legitimate. You can't be the doctor on, you know, the TV news who hasn't touched a patient in 20 years and is giving Dr. Oz. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, Zanja, Ganja Kuta, whatever you guys, <laughs> CNN. <laughs> Fuck you. You don't know weightlifting. <laughs> I hear weightlifting's bad for backs and knees. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. What's well, bad, but different. Not in the way you're thinking. Shut up, doctor on TV. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, you, you, if you if you don't have a place like this, you're not actively coaching, then you probably shouldn't be talking. Yeah. Well, I'll shut up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I'm so gonna wrap this it. up. Yeah. So, so again, one more time. What's the date? The movie's coming yeah. out November 16th, and AmericanWeightliftingFilm.com will have all the links. You'll all be able to access it online. You guys are gonna do a, a screening here. 
Yeah, there'll be uh, there'll be a screening November sixteenth in Cupertino, uh, in the Bay Area, and that's it's pretty much sold, sold out. out. Yeah, so. that's that's probably going to be a lost cause at the time this airs. But uh, yeah, it'll be available on DVD streaming. Uh, it'll be worldwide all on that same day. So audience, dude, if you if you want to support this great gym and this great sport, fucking get this. Go buy it. Go support your local whale there fucking download stream <laughs> show it to your friends yeah please help me redeem the last four years of my life <laughs> yeah it will not be in vain and if people are in the san jose san francisco area they got to come back out athletics yes indeed uh we're you know five minutes from san jose 35 minutes from san francisco so uh, it's easily accessible yeah i know sometimes i get uh crossfitters are like you know, I want to get better at weightlifting. What should I do? It's like, where do you live? You know, they'll, they'll say, a, a, they, they live like a half hour away from like a great weightlifting gym or something. Like, just go there. Yeah. Like, there's nothing I'm going to tell you that's going to be better than just going to a good coach. Go there and start living yeah. it. Just do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got to do it. You got to do it in person and live. And, and, you know, it's all the stuff on the internet and books is great. It's a good start. But if you're not actually there doing it and living it, then you're kind of just fucking wasting your time. Don't fucking waste your time. God, you have a finite life. We can do it. Fucking jerking off on the internet <laughs> trying to learn about weightlifting. Get in a gym. <laughs> that's, that's my last little rant. All right. We're going to sign off here. Uh, this is make, a passionate episode. Make sure you go to barbellstruck.com, sign up for the newsletter. Uh, follow Amy on Twitter. Do, oh, hey, you know what? Do you need to be followed anywhere? No, I, I try to stay off Twitter as, as much as possible. <laughs> Facebook, but I don't I don't, can't take any more friends. I guess there's a 5,000 person limit, so I finally feel like I made it in You're life so now. You're so popular. <laughs> I, know, I maxed <laughs> out Facebook. I'm done. I can retire. <laughs> um, but yeah, Catalyst Athletics. Uh, on Facebook, American Weightlifting on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, Barbell Shrugged, coupon code, American Weightlifting. Get five bucks off that download. So it'll be the first hundred people. What's the coupon code? Barbell Shrugged. Barbell Shrugged is a coupon code. Easy to remember. Mm -hmm. Perfect. (laughs) We will put that out there. (laughs) Hey, and if you're listening on iTunes and you enjoy this, go give us five stars. Leave a comment. Positive ones only. Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for coming on the show, Greg. You bet.